Our service this evening is the service of evening prayer for Sunday, the third week of Lent. And our service begins on page 18 of the Book of Common Prayer. I will arise and will go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture move with us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins of wickedness, and that we should not the symbol nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much to the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, the miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve thee with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. <clears throat> the psalm appointed for today's, tonight's service is psalm number 55. Psalm number 55 found on page 397. 397. Hear my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my petition. Take heed unto me and hear me, how I mourned in my prayer and am vexed. The enemy crieth so, and the ungodly cometh on so fast. For they are minded to do me some mischief, so maliciously are they set against me. My heart is disquieted within me, and the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and tre trembling are come upon me, 
and horrible dread hath overwhelmed me. And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Lo, then would I get my, me away far off, and abide in the wilderness. I would make haste to find me a shelter from the stormy wind and tempest. <clears throat> Destroy their tongues, O Lord, and divide them. For I have spied violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof. Inequity also and mischief are in the midst of it. Wickedness is therein. Oppression and guile go not out of their streets. For it is not an open enemy that hath done me this dishonor. For then I could have borne it. Neither was it mine adversary that did magnify himself against me. For then I would have hid myself from him. But it was even thou, my com companion, my guide and mine own familiar friend. We took sweet counsel together and walked in the house of God as friends. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. In the evening and morning and at the noon day will I pray that and that instantly, and he shall hear my voice. He had delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. For there were many that strove with me. <clears throat> yea, even God that endureth forever shall hide me and bring them down. For they will not turn nor fear God. He laid his hands upon such as were at peace with him and he break his covenant. His speech was smoother than butter, yet war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet be they very swords. O cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall uphold thee, and shall not suffer the righteous to be moved forever. But as for them, thou, O God, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. The bloodthirsty and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but my trust shall be in thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our first lesson is written in the book of Genesis, chapter 44, beginning at the first verse. Then he commanded the steward of his house, fill the men's sacks with food, as much as they can carry, and put each man's money in the mouth of his sack. And put my cup, the silver cup, in the mouth of the sack of the youngest, which his money, with his money for the, for the grain. <clears throat> and, they, and he did as Joseph told him, as soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away from their asses. When they had gone but a short distance from the city, Joseph said to a steward, Up, follow after the men, and when you overtake them, say to them, 
Why have you returned evil for good? Why have you stolen my silver cup? Is it not from that this that my Lord drinks, and by this that he divines? You have done wrong in doing so. When he overtook them, he spoke to them with these words. And they said to him, Why does my Lord speak such words as these? Far be it from your servants that they should do such a thing. Behold the money which we found in the mouth of our sacks, we brought back to you from the land of Canaan. How then should we steal silver and gold from your Lord's house? With whomever of your servants it be found, let him die, and we also will be my Lord's slaves. He said, Let it be as you say. He with whom it is found shall be my slave, and the rest of you shall be blameless. Then every man quickly lowered his sack to the ground, and every man opened his sack. And he searched, beginning with the eldest and ending with the youngest, and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they rent their clothes, and every man loaded his ass, and they returned to the city. When Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, he was still there, and they fell before him to the ground. And Joseph said to them, What deed is this that you have done? Do you not know that such a man as I can indeed divine? And Judah said, What shall we say to my Lord? What shall we speak? Or how can we clear ourselves? God has found out the guilt of your servants. Behold, we are my Lord's slaves, both we and he also in whose hand the cup has been found. But he said, Far be it from me that I should do so. Only the man in whose hand the cup was found shall be my slave. But as for you, go up in peace to your father. Then Judah went up to him and said, O my Lord, let your servant, I pray you, speak a word in my Lord's ear, and let not your anger burn against your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. My Lord asked his servants, saying, Have you a father or a brother? And he said to my Lord, We have a father, an old man, and a young brother, the child of his old age, and his brother is dead, and he alone is left of his mother's children, and his father loves him. Then you said to your servants, Bring him down to me, that I may set my eyes upon him. We said to my Lord, The lad cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. Then you said to your servant, Unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you shall see my face no more. When we went back to your servant, my father, we told him the words of my Lord. And when our father said, Go again, buy us a little food, we said, We cannot go down if our youngest brother goes with us. Then we will go down, for we cannot see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Then your servant, my father, said to us, you know that my wife bore me two sons. One left me, and I said, Surely he has been torn to pieces, and I have never seen him since. <clears throat> if you take this one also from me, and harm befalls him, you will bring down my gray hairs and sorrow to Sheol. Now therefore, when I come, to your servant my father, and the lad is not with us, 
Then, as his life is bound up in the lad's life, when he sees that the lad is not with us, he will die, and your servants will bring down the gray hairs of your servant, our father, with sorrow to Sheol. For your servant comes surety, for your servant becomes surety for the lad to my father, saying, If I do not bring him back to you, then I shall bear the blame in the sight of my father all my life. Now therefore let your servant, I pray you, remain instead of the lad as a slave to my Lord, and let the lad go back with his father, with his brothers. For how can I go back to my father if the lad is not with me? I fear to see the evil that would come upon my father. Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried, Make everyone go out from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud, so that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Here endeth the first lesson. Continuing now on page 21 with a Magnificat. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He had showed strength with his arm. He had scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He had filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he had sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath opened his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our second lesson is written in the 22nd chapter of the Gospel of Luke, beginning at the 54th verse. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. Peter followed at the distance, and when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter said, sat among them. Then a maid, seeing him as he sat in the light and gazing at him, said, This man also was with him. But he denied, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And a little later, some of, someone else saw him and said, 
you also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, Certainly this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are saying. And immediately while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus mocked him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and asked him, Prophesy, who is it that mock struck you? And they spoke many other words against him, reviling him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people gathered together, both chief priests and scribes, and they led him away to the council. And they said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the power of God. And they all said, Are you the Son of God then? And he said to them, You say that I am. And they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Here endeth the second lesson. Continuing now on page 22 with the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and never more mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. We beseech thee, Almighty God, look upon the hearty desires of thy humble servants, and stretch forth the right hand of thy majesty to be our defense against all our enemies. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all them that are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, 
that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Most gracious God, we humbly beseech thee for thy holy Catholic Church. Fill it with all truth and all truth with all peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is an error, direct it. Where anything is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen and confirm it. Where it is in want, furnish it. Where it is divided and rent asunder, make it whole again. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, support us all the day long of this troublous life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in thy mercy, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and thus promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.